Here we are. The Howling Steps. As inviting as a crypt. Is it just me, or does it smell like undead Arsia? Ugh. Oh, you're right, it does. Come on, let's take a look around. The village is just up ahead. Oh, what is that? <clears throat> By the... See that? What by the Guardians was that? I have no idea. Some kind of mutated insect. Do you see that fog over there? That must be where that stench is coming from. Hmm. This doesn't bode well if you ask me. Let's find that village. Just give the word. Okay. How do I... Like, honestly, if I could just have these move over, that would be perfect. Ah, uh, okay. I'm here. Let's see, is there a way? <clears throat> no. Hmm. Alright, helmet skip intro videos, push spacebar to the end of the loading screens. Displays, user interface. Click and fight, I like the slow motion. Faction schemes. Default's fine. Uh, hero box, top bottom, that's all I have options for. I'm Steam notification, top right. <sighs> okay, bummer! Bummer, bummer, bummer. Okay, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to reorganize this each time, which. Mine this sucks. Okay. Um We've got a bash. Hmm. I don't like that. Cause that just shows it, it's just for the mercenary, but I have the same skill, so I'd have to have it on twice if I want to use it on, on either or, which is dumb. It should be whoever's closer to the target. Yes, yeah, so if I do that. Yes, yeah, so you have to have them on twice. That's so dumb. Um. Have reanimation in the back. When oh, I have AOE on the other side. Um, this is... Let me get the stuns first. There we go. That causes a stun. <clears throat> then single target. Those are both perks, don't have to worry about that. Uh, that is a boon. I need that. Blood Siphon, Demonic Sacrifice, Self-Target Area of Effect. Yeah. They both cost blood. And I have... No, I don't. See? This is why I don't, I don't like... I don't like that fact. Whatever. That's why I like the other way before, where you just hit one, F1 through 4, jump through your characters, and then you can cast whatever you need. That was fantastic. This is dumb. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the telekinetic pull as well. Okay, switch that back over. Telekinetic pull. Okay. <gasps> yes? Alright. Here we go.
I mean, if there if there's a way to to turn that back, that would be awesome. Really? Heading down this way first. Looks like there's actually a question mark down. On, oh, it might be down there. Ooh, okay. Got some armor. Uh, no to that. No to that. Definitely no to that. Okay, now she's got a helmet on, which is great. Um, and she now has a better bow. I'll just put that in there for right now, I guess. And she's the only one that can use the two-hander. Okay. Reset all attributes and ability points. It doesn't reset your uh, your skill tree though, unfortunately. That is kind of what I wish I could do now. Oh man, I really do wish I could. I'd go uh, combat. Up ahead. Greetings. We leave. Uh. Why so hostile? Because you don't belong here. Yes. Zoema, what's going on here? Kayabu, blessings. The world has blessed us with outsiders again. <laughs> You're not with the bandits, are you? Uh, we're from the Wolf Guard. We're not bandits. We're from the Wolf Guard. Wolf Guard? I see. Look, if you want shelter and provisions, we can set up a tent for you outside the village walls. But you cannot enter, period. Now leave. I don't understand. Why can't we enter the village? Because our faith demands that we avoid contact with outsiders, regardless of their intentions. Though... Hmm. There's a lot of stick. We will cause no trouble. <laughs> Listen, we don't want to disrespect your customs, but there's a lot at stake here. There always is. Let them pass, Waremu. What? But the law won't help us deal with the bandits or the plague, whereas the outsiders might. Let them pass. You may restock your provisions inside. When you're done, meet me in the eastern part of the village. Stubborn boy. Fair enough, outsiders. You may enter, but we'll be keeping an eye on you. What don't mind it? me. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna raise the dead. Sounds like a plan. Ooh, we can talk to people. An outsider. Oh, what blessings! Please stay a while. Let us trade. What do you have to trade? Knowledge. Answers for answers. It is a rare opportunity to learn about the outside world. Come, ask me anything. Okay, uh, what do you know of the God of Light? What do you know of the God of Light? You speak of Shergdet. I'm sorry, outsider. That is a question I cannot answer. Yeah, but, but you just told me! All right, <laughs> I understand. Thank you. Shall we speak of something else? Uh... Why do you want to know about outsiders? I thought the Aliani shunned the outside world. Our laws prevent many interactions with outsiders. That is true, and indeed many of my kin want nothing to do with them. But I do not see it that way. Knowledge alone is not dangerous. It is what we do with that knowledge that matters. My curiosity is just that. Curiosity. That we should avoid something does not mean that we should not try to understand it. I, for one, would like to know why we keep the laws that we do. I wish there were more people like you. I wish there were more Aliani like you. Me too, outsider. Me too. All right, my turn. What would you say is the worst thing about the outside world? 
Greed. People are greedy. It doesn't matter if they're a king or a beggar. People always want more. Wealth, power, prestige. It's endless. Ambitions that know no bounds. I see. Very well. Go on. Your turn again. Hmm. What's your role in the tribe? Are you a hunter? A farmer? I am one of the tribe's many gatherers. We do not farm, you see. The steps do not allow for it. So instead, the gatherers scour the land for plants and roots. That is how we survive. All right, your turn. What is your home like? Grey. Greyfell, was it? Mm. I'm not actually from Greyfell. Greyfell isn't actually home for me. I was born in a small village, but I left when I was young. I haven't really thought about that place for a long time. I'm sorry to hear that. Don't be. But I am. Home is everything to us. Family, community, tradition. Ah, but I digress. Did you want to speak about something else? Now we're good, since you can't tell me about the God of Light. I'll be going. Ah. All right. Blessings to you, then. All right, let's go. Uh, can't talk, can't talk. All right, where did that guy go? There he is. Oh, we got a traitor. Hold on. Ooh, and a quest. Maybe. Looking for potions and scrolls? I'm sure I have just what you need. Mm, not so much. Farewell. You have to let this go. Are you all right? You're that outsider, aren't you? Just keep walking, please. Wait, Takana, wouldn't they be able to help? You look as though you can defend yourself, outsider. I suppose I can. What do you need help with? My wife, Ehina, she... She went out to gather food a week ago. I told her to stay away from that bandit camp. But she insisted that's the only place you could still find berries. The bandits... They killed her. Oh, I'm sorry. I told her not to go. <clears throat> Sheok, that's mercy. She deserves better than to rot on the steps. You didn't bury her? We never found her body. After our last search, the chieftain forbade us from continuing. Said it was too dangerous. Well, he also said it's time to let go, you know? <sighs> hmm. And who are and you? who are you? The name's Reita. I'm Ihina's sister. Please, outsider, tell my brother here that he needs to move on. You don't think you should keep searching for her body? Look, of course I want her found. She should have the full burial rights of our people. But not if it's going to cost the lives of everyone who loved her. Between the plague and the bandits, it's too risky. So no. I think we have looked as much as we can. She is with the ancestors now. Or she's now a bandit. If you never found her body, how do you know she was killed by the bandits? There were signs of a struggle and blood all over her campsite. There's no animal on the steps that could do such a thing. So you found where she was killed, but there wasn't a body? No, she wasn't there. Maybe the bandits wanted to cover up their crime, or... Or... Now look what you've done, outsider. Sorry. I'm not restricted by your chieftain's decree. I could search for her body. You... You would do that? An outsider? I have business in the valley anyway. I can keep an eye out. Oh, ancestors bless you. You have no idea how much that means to me. Start with her campsite. It's near the bandit camp. We were in a rush when we found it, so maybe we missed something. Okay, I'll take a look. I'm gonna steal from them first. Glossaries. I wanted. Uh, yeah, I don't need that right now. And that's the scrolls. Okay. Huh. Aww. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, I was hoping hmm. you would stop by. You were? Why, yes. We are not allowed outsiders into the village for nearly 40 years. As such, your actions here will be recounted in our stories. And since it's my honor to carry these stories, I was hoping to speak with you. Uh... Yeah, sure. Can you share any stories of any people? I'd like to learn more about your people. 
Are there any stories you can share? Ah, you are interested in our stories. Well then, let me tell you of Kahi and the wind. In the earliest days, the winds ravaged all lands. It shaped about mountains, the carved waves in the oceans. <laughs> Everything bowed know. to it. Our people struggled to exist in such chaos until Kahi challenged the wind to a race. She held up a small stone. How do you Whoever challenge could the wind? The stone first would be the victor. The wind, confident in its power, agreed without hesitation. But when the race began, Kahi threw the stone into the lake. Though the wind blew with the strength of a cyclone, it could not reach the bottom of the lake. Kahi dove down and retrieved the stone. Enraged, the wind howled for having been tricked, but Kahi was not moved. She commanded the wind to be calm so that our people might flourish. Still, the wind is devious, and it is said that when Kahi's spirit is not looking, it acts up and causes the storms that rage on the steppes. But Kahi's spirit always returns to remind the wind of its place. That was an interesting story. Thanks for sharing with me. My pleasure. You mentioned the last time outsiders were allowed into the village was 40 years ago. What happened? Yes. Many in the village chose not to remember, but I carry that story with me. A fierce storm had swept over the steps. The howling winds and lashing rains kept the children awake for nights on end. On one of those nights, three outsiders appeared at the village gates. Traders, they claimed, who had been caught in the storm. One of them was gravely ill. Mayawa called them rotten and began to close the gates until his mother, the chieftain, stopped him. What happened next? The outsiders were allowed to rest and recover in the village. Many of the people were uneasy, but they trusted the chieftain's decision. As soon as the storm cleared and the outsiders were well again, we sent them on their way. We never saw them again. That's, That's it? it? You nursed them back to health and then sent them away? Perhaps you mistake kindness for friendship. Our chieftain bore no love for outsiders either, but she did respect our teachings. It was she who told them never to return. I see. Thanks for the story. Of course. That was I have weird. To go now. <laughs> that was wish. weird. Listen for the storm. Stay close. Okay. Oh, we got another person to talk to. Leave here, outsider. No good will come from you poking around. Look, I'm not here to cause any trouble. Aren't you now? Well, what do you want, then? Uh, What's life like on the steps? Why do you want to know? That I know, uh... Me and my big army can conquer you! <laughs> I'm just curious. Even without those beetles, it seems like a pretty desolate place to live. Well, I won't lie. It is. Desolate, bleak, miserable. These are words I would use to describe the steps. Then why live here? Why not move? Because it is home. It is where we are connected to our ancestors. To the truth of who we are. If we were to leave, no matter the ease of survival or the pleasantness of our surroundings, there would always be something missing. We would always be longing to return. Hmm. I see. I hope you do. Truly. Why do you hate outsiders so much? We do not hate. What you mistake for hatred is simply our way of saying no. No, you may not enter. No, you may not spread your outsider ways. But why be so unfriendly? We haven't done anything. So you claim. The simple truth is we do not owe outsiders anything. Not our friendship, not our customs. Anything else. I'll leave you alone then. One can only hope. You are a dick. <laughs> And I can uh, reset my uh, stats twice now. Outsider, you found me. First of all, I hope you didn't take Zawema's distrust personally. It's just, 
Well, we Aliani can be quite rigid when it comes to our traditions. I noticed that. The name's General Erev, by the way. So, from what I gathered, your village is in some kind of trouble, and you could use our help. Is that right? Most of my people would disagree, but yes, I think we do. I assume you also didn't come here without a reason, did you? You assume right. We need information about the god you worship. Sheok did? Ancestors, that's... that's strange. How so? Well, it's a peculiar coincidence. But I think we should save the discussions for later. Let me be brief. Our village is in trouble, and that plague you probably saw on your way here is only part of it. About two weeks ago, a group of bandits appeared and took over most of the valley. They've effectively cut us off from our hunting grounds, and slowly but surely, we're running out of food. Now, our chieftain went to negotiate with the bandits, hoping that they could come to some kind of agreement. Even the wise women told him that it's too dangerous, but he wouldn't listen. It's been over two hours since he left. You want to make sure he's all right? Exactly. I may be mistaken, but you look as though you can handle yourself in a fight. When you say the plague, I assume you mean those beetles and the fog? And the fungi that are the root of the problem, yes. But as I said, I'll explain later. Your village does have guards though, doesn't it? Why didn't they go look for him? Because the chieftain forbade anyone from leaving, and they don't dare violate his order. Also, we Aliani aren't... how should I put it? We aren't the most formidable fighters. It has to do with our faith, but there will be time for explanations later. Please, we must go. What on Eo is a group of bandits doing all the way out here? We're asking ourselves the same thing. Then again, they don't look like ordinary bandits. They are well-armed and have members from all races. Huh. Odd. Fine. Where did your chieftain meet with these bandits? West of the village. Come. I'll show you. Way to? This way. I'm assuming we come this way. Where are you guys going? You see that? They were just going their own direction. Weirdos. <laughs> you there. There you are. Blessings of the ancestors, outsider. Um, likewise. What do you need? Well, I heard about your arrival on the steps. You have workers, don't you? Craftsmen? Yeah. Good. I am Kao, the village architect. And I have a favor to ask of you. We are dangerously low on iron, but with everything going on, we don't have the means or the strength to collect more. And without iron, I can't keep the village from falling into disrepair. And then your people will have even more problems on their hands. Exactly. If your men could help us out, I'll give you something that could be of use to you. A vengeful spirit? When you say something mm -hmm. of use, what exactly are you offering? Something my daughter found in an old human outpost outside. Schematics that you might have use for. All, all right. right. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. That's all I can ask. Thank you. Definitely, hell yeah. Okay, hold on. How do I get... I ever feel a sense of estrangement? A feeling as though you don't belong anywhere? Um, do you mind if we discuss this later? Of course. Okay, I can't go over there yet. Uh, what the... Get out of the fog, outsider! It's poisonous! Way. Sure. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, those are the spirits that uh, the the doppelgangers. Okay. Keep it up. Try to keep up. Don't mark me. All right. Uh, I could go across. Ooh, 
there is something over yes. here. Oh shit! Access to it yet? This is it. Said it done. So it. There we go. There we go. Oh, we killed ourselves a dragon. A wee dragon, but still the dragon. Bunch of things. Uh... Oh, wait. Scroll of Berserk, a stabilization plan. Ah, Out of the way. That's all that was. Kind of feel a little let down. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. All righty. Check up here real quick. Sure. Nope. Ooh, we got a chest down there though. Oh, so it's true. Age doesn't just rot your old joints, but also your brains. I told you, old man, we're staying. There has to be some way we can see eye to eye. My people are starving, and I heard you the first time. Now I suggest you take your cane and hobble back to your village. Unless you want a reminder, huh? You cannot. <laughs> <laughs> now look at those weapons. So you sheep have some fight in you after all, don't you? Careful, General. Those are purity ropes. They must be fugitives. Right. Look, sir, we mean you no harm. You should put down that weapon. Oh, oh, the way that soldier is looking at me says something else. Well, here to incarcerate us, aren't you? Well... Tough luck. We're not coming with you. Uh, ooh, give you give three thousand gold here. Take it and go. Ooh, hold Are on. Are you with the purity of light? You're wearing their robes. Well observed. Yes, we used to be, but that was before the god our leader prayed to turned out to be rotten. Oh, terribly tragic and all, but well, what can you do? We know better now. Okay. What do you want from these people? From them? Huh. Just to mind their own business. We cannot mind our own business if you keep us from our hunting grounds. My people are starving. Uh, isn't that unfortunate? We're not here to fight. Just leave these people alone. Uh... Look, we're not looking for a fight. Just leave these people alone. Huh, really? You think you can flash that badge and get all high and mighty with us? Boys, oh, oh, I think oh. this one needs a lesson. Get up! Oh! Yes. All right, pull him in. And uh, demonic sacrifice. That should almost finish him off. Uh. There we go. Come on, little man. Uh-oh. Oh, did the dude die? Oh, no, he's right there. Did you bring them here, son? Hold on. He's your son? 
He is. Huh. All right. Well, Kayawu said you could give us information about the deity you worship. The God of Light. Then he overstepped his bounds. There is nothing I will tell you. Ancestors, father! At least hear them out. They just saved your life. Which might not have been necessary if you hadn't shown up. But, fine. Speak. So, you came here because you think we know how to kill the God of Light. Actually, any information would help. We know nothing about it, except that it apparently wants to re-enter our world. In that case, you're best advised to leave it at that. Once Jakku has begun, there is no stopping it. Jakku? The Alyani prophecy of the end. The eon-old pattern ensuring that one day, Sheogdead will devour us all. I respect your faith, but isn't there anything we can do to convince you? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I respect your faith, but isn't there anything we can do to convince you? We need answers. I am sorry, and the soil shall breathe rot, soaked in poison and blood. The scrolls, verse 2. Jaku has begun. And this plague is just one of its many omens. So regardless of what I tell you, the fate of this world is sealed already. Just go, turn around, spend time with your loved ones. Enjoy what little time you have left. Look, Father, I don't think you're seeing the full picture. Yes, maybe Jaku is inevitable. But what about our people? If we don't find food soon, people will start dying. And the fugitives still control the parts of the valley the plague hasn't poisoned yet. If the answers we give these outsiders won't change anything anyway, why not let them help us? For the sake of our tribe. As persuasive as your mother. Fine. Outsider. Are these troops of yours that you mentioned large enough to match the fugitives? They will be if we fight smart. So, that's the deal? We handle the purity in return for information? The bandits and the plague. You deal with both, and we give you your answers. Son, what? I don't know, Kayawu. My division can deal with the purity, but I don't see how we can help with the fog. You can destroy its source. The fungi. Fungi? Yes. They are what's causing this. The first of them appeared some weeks ago, and wherever they grow, they rot the soil and produce this fog. We think it's their spores. The beetles came around the same time, so they probably live in some kind of symbiotic relationship. Now, if someone were to destroy the fungi, maybe the fog would... Disappear. Yes, and we know how well this worked out for Ukwe and Zama, don't we? Those fugitives are one thing. The plague is another. It's part of Jakku, and it can't be stopped. Hmm. Why are you so... resigned? Hmm. Why are you so resigned? Maybe your son is right, and the plague can be fought back. Spoken like a true outsider, offended by the notion that sometimes there are forces at work which are beyond your understanding. Please, I don't think there's any point in me trying to explain our ways to you. We are simply too different. Who are Ukewe and Zawa? Two hunters. They tried to destroy the fungi from a distance, as the fog made it impossible to get up close. Suffice it to say that it didn't go well. The beetles came. And now our village has two more grieving widows. When you say a symbiotic relationship, do you mean the beetles and the fungi feed off each other? We think so, yes. It would explain why they both appeared at the same time, and why the beetles protect the fungi like their own eggs. Ugh. Ugh. So, <laughs> you think this plague is connected to your prophecy? 
Jakku? The wise women say so. And even if they didn't, the third verse of the scrolls speaks for itself. And the soil shall breathe rot, soaked in poison and blood. So you think our god has uh, light sent them? So you think what? That the god of light sent those fungi to corrupt your lands? Sent them? <laughs> no. I think that they are the expression of a particular stage in the pattern. Hmm. Hmm. That's a strange coincidence. It is not a coincidence. I think it is. Those fugitives are religious fanatics. Maybe they planted the fungi. That's unlikely. They probably came here to escape justice, so what would they gain from poisoning the land? I agree with your friend. They seem to be as upset about the fog as we are. Hmm. Fair enough. All right. We can try destroying the fungi, but we'll need a way to get past the fog. Then you'll have to search for it. Maybe driving the fugitives out of the valley will give options we didn't have. That's a big maybe. I know, but I'm afraid it's all I have to offer. Fair enough. So we have a deal, Chieftain? We handle the fugitives and the plague, and you give us information. Seems like my son has made the decision for me. <laughs> Fine. If you have to fail to see futility, <clears throat> then so be it. Let us talk about those fugitives. According to our scouts, they have four commanders. One of them, a man named Thedric, being their leader. Apart from him, each commander is in charge of one of their camps. You should find him there. Thedric himself, on the other hand, moves around a lot, probably to ascertain everything in the camp is going to his liking. Always be on the lookout. Well, and that is all I can tell you. I wager that if you tear down their main encampment, the rest will flee. Good luck, General Erev. Okay.